Living. Today I wanted to talk with you um, concerning the problem I'm having with my voice. <laughs> um, we just have gotten over a flu, upper respiratory virus that hit our house about 10 days ago and it hit it pretty hard. Um, we have a family of six and five of us came down with it. My voice is the one that apparently took the worst of the beating where everybody else seemed seemed to be okay on that end, but we all had coughs and sore throats and, and just a feeling of, of not feeling good at all. So we, we believe firmly in natural remedies. We, first off, we believe in prevention, but I don't care how well you take care of yourself or how well you eat or you know if you're up on all your vitamins, whether you get it through supplements or through your food. Things just happen sometimes. Sometimes, um, whether you're you're busy, like we've been so busy with getting ready to move and and our work and stuff, that I know that a lot of you know the the adults in the home are really run down, just being tired and kind of overwhelmed. I think that took a big hit on our immunity. And when the virus got brought in, it hit the majority of us. Typically, in the past. Um, Usually, if somebody gets sick, it's just that one person. We, we try to keep our immunity up so that you know we're ready to fight these things, but we just had an ultimate fail here. And so the point went from trying to avoid getting sick to trying to get through this illness um, as comfortably as possible and making it a short-lived illness because it seemed to really have some strong foothold. So and that's the reason why I'm here today is I wanted to share with you some of the things that um, we do in our home to help us get beyond uh, when the virus does take hold, get, get beyond that to, to give us comfort, to get us through the discomforts of whatever the virus is causing. Again, in this one, it was sore throat and cough. So one of, the, um, one of my favorite things to do for this uh, is to look at herbs or other um, you know, natural things that have antiviral and antibacterial properties. At least one, if not both. Some foods will have one, some foods will have have both them. And then my first um, things that I do is I make a tea out of lemon, raw honey, a form of ginger, and it can be the ginger root, um, it can be the ginger powder, it can even be um, a bottle of already pressed ginger root. Now there's, you know, a lot of it's personal um, preference on what you feel has the most properties. I have found for this situation that because um, ginger itself is a great antibacterial and anti-inflammatory that it, if, you, if you don't have the fresh root and you have to go with the powder, you're still in a win-win situation. So with these, I also add cayenne pepper. I'll take a cup of water and depending on who I'm making this for, for myself I'll use about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. For the little ones I use about an eighth of a teaspoon. And the same with the powdered ginger if I'm using powdered ginger. If I'm using fresh root or bottled, I do two tablespoons of the juice. Um, and then I use a healthy tablespoon of raw honey and my lemon. Now all, ginger, all these actually have an antibacterial and a couple have an antiviral. So what it's doing to the throat is it's helping fight that bacteria that's already in there or the, or the viral, I mean, you know, it, it, either or. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes their sickness isn't just a viral, sometimes it's an infection trying to set in. Um, it can be that the viral is causing, you know, your immunity system to weaken and then we get, we get an, you know, an infection, whether it's like strep or something, it has to be taken care of with it with an antibiotic or a form of antibiotic. Um, so you sip on this, you make this, and you sip on it for about a half hour. You take that long to drink it. It's not something you chug down. You don't want to chug it down, especially with the cayenne pepper in it. And if you're not used to it, it can upset your stomach. So with the, the footing that this particular virus um, had, and when I say that, it means it seemed like it, it came in waves. One day you'd feel this way, and then it would, you know, the next day it would add something else to it. And then the next day I would add something else to it. My goal became to um, not only get us through this as comfortably as possible, but also to try to be hitting um, it with things that would try to stop it in its tracks regularly. So I would, you know, we'd make two or three cups of this a day and sip on it for, for relief and for um, the properties that it had to help fight the virus. The other thing you can do with this 
if you don't like the warm tea is you can make it cold. Now you can use fresh lemon for this, um, for the cold version. I actually just use bottled lemon and then it, what it does is it reverts from the, you know, the healthful benefits with the lemon to more of a flavor. But my, my younger ones liked the cold better. It felt better on their throat and they were more willing to drink that. So then I would take two tablespoons of this per cup of water as well as a tablespoon of the raw honey and the ginger. And the ginger was the main property that I was trying to get into the little ones when they drank this tea. But it, you make it ahead, you know, make a big batch of it and put it in the ice box and it will last for several days um, as they sip on it. And it's, it's soothing and it's very, very good for them. The other thing that I would do to add to it, I, I would look for things that were um, benign as far as worrying about having too much of it. Olive oil has, I mean, all these things that I've mentioned have, have tons of different credits to their name. When, but because of what we were fighting specifically, I, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on these things. Olive oil is one of those, those things that has a multitude of benefits to it. But in this situation with the, the virus, it's very soothing to the throat. If you take a tablespoon of it, it's an antibacterial but it also coats the throat. So if you have this irritating cough, you know, the tickly cough, it just won't go away. And then of course that causes the chest to hurt. Um, this could be taken multiple times a day. You don't have to worry about, you know, any toxicity to it. You don't have to worry about any ill effects. And it just, it gives a comfort that otherwise that, that cough just hangs in there. We also would use plantain tea. Um, Plantain tea is just awesome. I just love plantain tea. And it's it's good, you know, it's good fresh, it's good in a poultice, it's good in a tea. And in this situation, it also soothes the throat and soothes the cough. Um, we, you know, we drink a couple of cups of this a day with, along with everything else. My oldest son, the only one that did not get sick, his favorite um, in when he's not feeling well is echinacea. Echinacea is a great immunity booster. And of course these things are great to take prior to feeling ill, but again, you just can't always avoid being sick no matter how healthy you are. Somewhere down the line something's going to sneak in and get you. And in this situation, um, echinacea, even though it, it, it's not a, it wasn't taken in advance to fight it, it still helps the immunity to build up to fight during the battle that's raging in your body. Now, echinacea is a little bit peppery for me. I don't, I don't care for it. My little ones don't care for it, but the older ones have enjoy it. So that was something else that we coupled. My 19-year-old my did, did end up coming down with it, so he was able to take that. Something for the chest. <clears throat> um, I made a rub out of olive oil and eucalyptus. Now, that's like the replacement of the old Vicks, Vicks rub, but in a natural form. And it, that was incredibly helpful in this particular virus. For my littlest one, who, you know, you gotta be real careful and protect, you know, you gotta be real careful with oils um, because they are very concentrated. My littlest one, I made a rub of olive oil and lavender. Um, so that it was highly diluted and applied it to his feet, which this helped his cough, but it also, lavender is very comforting and it, it um, helped reduce the stress that he was feeling and helped him to sleep really well. Now, apple cider vinegar, again, is one of those things that has just a hundred great things going for it. Um, I take it all the time for uh, gallbladder issue that I have and um, I used to I started taking actually about 10 years ago I was having high blood pressure and I did not want to go on medication and I did some research and found out that it's supposed to work and to my surprise it, it did and at the same time I also realized um, that it was helping my gallbladder so but they say that if you take this I mean, when you have a cold it helps your immunity build your immunity up and it also helps with your throat and I it wasn't something I had to add because I already was doing it um, but they do say, they do credit the soothing of the throat with it. And you can add that to the, like the lemon tea if you don't like the taste of the, the apple cider vinegar, which should always be diluted in water, a tablespoon um, to like a cup of water. 
or you know you can even do two tablespoons to a cup of water but put that in your your lemon tea and that will that will help with the flavor of that and the last thing that we do I shouldn't say it's, a, it's not the last it's actually one of the first things is we take silver we usually take silver when the flu season begins just to help our immunity um, we take like a daily dose it's a um, it's a preventative type dose again we've been under a lot of stress um, physically not really maybe not even realizing it and also emotionally because of everything going on and you know that wears on your body and we have we had let some of our practices um, to the wayside because of all the activity going on. So when the first person came down with the virus, we had not been taking this as a daily preventative, nor did we start it right away as a, you know, if we're, if, if we're not in the middle of flu season and we're not taking it as a daily preventative, we look for maybe if we've been exposed to something, then we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll take this to try to boost our immunity. But we didn't do that in this situation. We had actually, all our barriers were down and we didn't start it until, until the house was well, most of us were already sick, but the um, silver, at any rate, is is very good for the immunity. If you can um, have some on hand, silver is a great antibiotic. It it's very um, useful. Like if you have throat infections or ear infections, something that's not viral, something that's actually a bacterial, and again, it will boost your immunity to help with viral. If you don't, if you've taken it at the right time, or if you catch it and go ahead and take it to give your body an extra boost. You know, if I just wanted to bring this um, to anyone that might need it while they're, you know, caught off guard, and maybe come down sick. All these things can help reduce the longevity, the time of a, a virus that you end up with. Um, if you catch it, if you use the stuff in advance, and you're, you know, you're, you're alert, it can actually ward off the virus. Um, it can also, all these things were primarily to soothe um, the throat and the cough, and they all work really well. So I hope this was helpful to you. Also, please note that this is not medical advice, nor is it meant, intended to be medical advice to replace any advice of your doctor. Um, this is just something we do for our family. We've, we've done research, we've used it, and we believe in the power that, that's in it um, to help heal and prevent illnesses. Thanks and God bless.